Let's go shopping at Trader Joe's, our favorite place. All right, hi everybody. So I went to Trader Joe's and I picked up some unique foods that I really like and I wanted to share that with you today. So this video isn't about chicken and rice and potatoes, sweet potatoes and regular fish. Hopefully this will be a little more exciting. So the first thing I picked up was langostino tails. All right, this looks like shrimp. Some people think it's lobster. This is pure protein. 16 grams of protein and three ounces. So this bag is 12 ounces. The, um, the reason why people like these is it's just a little cheaper and smaller than lobster, but it's not lobster. I will say this though. They call these squat lobsters. So anything that has the name squat in it has to be good for gains. So that's why I picked up some langostino tails because they are squat lobsters even though they're more closely related to hermit crabs. But basically pure protein here, it's already cooked. So I have mine thawing out. And what I'll do is I'll probably eat five ounces of it and I'll put some cocktail sauce on it. And I just eat it chilled. There's other ways you can eat it. But again, it's wild caught langostino tails. It says no sodium tripolyphosphate. That's just the chemical they put on things like scallops and these to make it look shiny and give it more texture. Apparently a lot of that stuff is uh, like a neurotoxin to your brain, but I don't know how much it takes to turn you into a vegetable. Uh, but anyways, this doesn't have that stuff on them. So pure protein here, langostino tails. That's food number one. All right, the next food is raw and fermented sauerkraut. Uh, I, so the number one reason why I like this food is because this is basically raw cabbage and they ferment it with lactic acid bacteria. But when they do that, it produces probiotics. And I see a lot of people that um, just suggest throwing probiotic supplements at people when they have stomach issues. And that can be a very bad idea. Um, if they don't know what strains the probiotics are or what, I mean, it's very difficult to identify what exactly the imbalance is in your stomach. And we have a lot of, particularly coaches in this industry, that just blanketly throw probiotics at people's stomachs and actually makes them even worse. Um, so anyways, uh, this is a food source, which I would much rather see somebody that has stomach issues or digestive issues. I would much rather see them use sauerkraut before they start pounding down probiotic pills. I actually like this a lot when I'm dieting. The, that sour taste and the crunchy texture is really good. Sometimes I'll throw it on rice, sometimes I'll throw it on eggs. But this is a very, very uh, nutritious uh, food here that you should probably have in your diet year round. A cup of this day I think is fantastic. But this is the Trader Joe's brand. There's a lot of different kinds of brands out there, but this is the one I really like. This actually has Persian cucumbers in it as well, in addition to the cabbage. But sauerkraut, this is a winner, probiotic producing food in your gut. It's actually good for your immune system too. Actually, it has vitamin C in it as well. So sauerkraut, pick some of this up. The next food is couscous. Now, uh, when I used to work in the corporate world, I worked across the street from a little strip mall and I used to go over there for lunch and they had this really nice Greek place. And I'd always get this uh, lamb and couscous dish for my lunch. And they would, uh, they would serve this couscous and it had like some sauce that they put over it that was really fantastic. Um, but my, I think this stuff really originates probably from Northern Africa, but you'll see different versions of it from Israel, from Egypt. In Egypt, I know they use it more as a dessert. They put some sweet stuff on it. But what I like about this food is for people who particularly who, trying to gain, who are trying to gain mass, there is a lot of carbohydrates in this stuff. A third of a cup has 44 grams of carbs. So you can really, it's very calorically dense. You can, kind of like cream of rice, very calorically dense. So you can really pound down a lot of calories 
with this. It should be kind of light and fluffy when you eat it. I like to put sauces on it, like a tomatoey type sauce on it. Um, you can mix in some meat with it, some chicken or whatever you want to eat. But I really like this stuff. Very calorically dense. It's nothing spectacular nutritionally. It's actually not a rice. It's actually a pasta, which is kind of unique too. When you look at it, it looks more like a rice. But um, cool food here. I like to have this. I've been kind of craving some of this with some tomato sauce on it. So I picked some of this up. But for those of you who especially are trying to gain mass, man, this is a great option for you. Okay, next food. Tandoori naan bread or naan bread. Um, I have a friend that uh, I used to work with at Chase and he introduced me to these. So Prashant Natiri, thank you very much, my friend. This stuff is awesome. And each one of these, each one of these flat, these are flatbreads. Each one of them has 60 grams of carbs. So again, if you're trying to gain mass, it's a great way to add easy calories. There's many different things you can do with this. Um, you could, you know, you could put it in the oven, you could microwave for 30 seconds. What a lot of people do is they'll put ghee, that's clarified butter, on it after they heat it up. You could put sauces on it, you know, like that tomato sauce I mentioned with the couscous. You could put that on here. You could put veggies on here, cooked veggies. You could put cooked meats on here. Um, a lot of the different things you can do. You could eat it plain, although most people like to use it um, with some type of flavoring or spices. The kind that I had that my friend made for me, the Indian food is great because they use a lot of different spices. So it has a lot, there's many different tastes um, that you get with Indian food that I really, really enjoy. So this stuff, I really, really like it. I gotta be careful, I'll eat all these today. Uh, these are really good. So tandoori naan bread. Again, it's an Indian style flat bread. Very, very good stuff. A lot of, uh, and each one of these has 10 grams of protein too. So get you a little bit extra protein. Probably not a complete protein, but um, some extra calories. So, non bread, give this a shot. Right, next up, speaking of bread, we have sourdough bread. I personally love sourdough bread. My favorite sourdough bread I just had in Australia. We'll put a picture up here so you can see what it looks like with some awesome eggs in Australia. But sourdough bread is interesting. Um, a lot of people I know have, the, maybe they get a little bit bloated eating regular bread. But with sourdough bread, people don't seem to get bloated. Um, it's made different than regular bread. They actually ferment it with um, uh, lactic acid and um, yeast. Uh, but anyway, so the lactobacilli, that, that process can break down something called phytic acid that you might have read about. Phytic acid can help or it can, it can hurt your body in terms of digestion, um, can make digestion harder. So maybe the fact that the phytic acid is neutralized helps you digest this. I don't know. Uh, I'm not that much of a bread scientist, but I can tell you that this stuff seems to digest easier. Uh, there have been some studies done that showed it created less of an insulin spike than regular bread, more of a stable level of insulin from the carbohydrates. So um, this was this is actually a sprouted wheat version, sprouted kind of like Ezekiel bread, which I know many of you like as well. So sourdough bread, like if I have my choice in bread, and I have two slices of this every single morning, I love my sourdough bread. So this is, um, in fact, this is so good, I'm probably going to do its own separate video on it to talk a little bit more about it. But sourdough bread, you can't go wrong with this stuff. All right, our next food is crunchy salted peanut butter with flax and chia seeds. Now the benefit of the flax and chia seeds is the essential fatty acids that you get in it. The alpha linolenic acid can be converted into DHA and EPA. Probably better off just to get that through fish oil. But this stuff is really crunchy and I love the texture of it. So I figure maybe I'll get some good omega-3s from it. There's also some other good benefits uh, from the flax and chia seeds as well. But I really like this just because of the texture. I like it on toast. I like it in my protein shakes. I, my protein shakes, I almost always put this in it. Um, so anyways, it's not your traditional standard peanut butter or almond butter, but um, I just like this stuff again because of the texture. I don't know that you get a massive amount of omega-3s from it. I'm not going to sit here and tell you that. But if you give me this or regular peanut butter, I'll take this every time because I really like that texture and just the fact that maybe I can get some more omega-3s is pretty appealing to me. So uh, crunchy and salted peanut butter with flax and chia seeds. My kids love this too, by the way. 
So if you have if you have youngsters, kids, uh, their bodies actually convert the alpha linolenic alpha linolenic acid better to EPA and DHA when they're younger, as opposed to when we get older. So this actually be better for your kids too. Next up, we uh, we already did the one fish, the langostino tails. We have another fish here, wild sockeye smoked salmon. Notice it says wild. I would always advise you to get wild salmon as opposed to farm salmon. Uh, if you want to know why, do a little research on it. Type in farm salmon and you'll see some stuff that's pretty gross. But um, wild salmon, this is, I like this for a couple reasons. Number one, it just tastes good. Uh, one of my favorite meals, post-workout meals, is actually putting this on a bagel with some cream cheese. And I've put that on a lot of people's diet plans to their, uh, to their enjoyment. Um, but I like this because it has a lot of sodium in it. I know a lot of people don't like sodium, but I do like sodium. I, um, there's somewhere 750 milligrams in, a, in two ounces. So this is a lot of sodium. I like the sodium personally. Um, it tastes good. It's nice and moist. One of the things that I sometimes do when I have people compete, uh, when they're backstage, if they, if, you know, if you look at them, they're, you know, say an hour, hour out of being on stage. If they tend to be pretty flat, um, their vascularity is gone, they don't look real good. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll give them about four ounces of this smoked salmon and it kind of brings them back to life. That sodium gets in there, it's easy to get down, doesn't upset their stomachs, it's in such a little amount of food. And um, I've seen it do some pretty cool things. So it's kind of one of our little backstage secrets for people who are competing. But um, wild the sockeye salmon, you're gonna get uh, your full complement of omega-3 from this too. Sometimes I see like cans of tuna and it says omega-3s in it. It's like if you have, if you have 0.5 grams of fat, how much omega-3 is really in it? You know, so, and this has six grams and two ounces. So you know you're getting all the healthy fats that you want when you get it this way. So Pacific Sockeye Salmon, this is absolutely, this is the brand I always get right here. I really, really like this. This is my favorite, favorite type of smoked salmon. Okay, next up we have unsweetened cocoa powder. Now, what I like to do with this is I actually like to put it in my protein shakes. Uh, this here, Tr Trader Joe's version, is made from cocoa beans in Colombia, I believe. But um, cocoa powder is really interesting. There's research out there on how it helps with blood vessel health the, and the ability for your blood vessels to dilate and constrict in a healthy way. Um, it's pretty interesting. Some of the studies I've seen were done with diabetics that have impaired blood vessel function, but this stuff has a lot of flavonoids in it, and I don't think they really understand maybe what, what all the mechanisms of actions are uh, from all these different flavonoids, but there seems to be a correlation with the flavonoids and, and health that's a positive correlation, better blood vessel action, like I said. And then also it does have some magnesium in it as well. Um, it does have caffeine in it, so you probably don't want to drink it before you go to bed in your shake. I typically use it in a morning protein shake if I have a morning protein shake. Um, and my favorite would be to use this with the crunchy flax and chia seed peanut butter that I talked about. Put this in a protein shake and you are in business. So cocoa powder, this is, um, it's unsweetened, so don't think that just eating it like this is going to taste good because it's not. But there are a lot of benefits to this. Uh, this is another one I think you should give a shot. All right, so you know anytime I go to Trader Joe's, I have to get something for dessert too. And one of my favorite desserts is actually mochi. This is a coffee-flavored mochi. This is my absolute favorite. This stuff is really, really unique. I had never had this until maybe uh, two or three years ago. I started going to a sushi restaurant, um, actually managed by my friend Lauren. She was the one we did uh, some flexibility videos with and a leg training video with. So, but anyways, Lauren said, you got to try the mochi. So she brought out some mochi. There was a strawberry, a chocolate, and a vanilla. Then they had a red bean one that was really, really good. But then I saw this over at Trader Joe's, the coffee one. These are awesome. This is pretty cool. It's a Japanese rice cake, they call it. But they use a glutinous rice flour, and they like pound it with a mallet until it becomes kind of sticky. Uh, and you'll see on the ingredients, a modified tapioca starch and glutinous rice flour. But they pound it, and then they wrap it around this bean paste. So it sounds kind of crazy, but it tastes awesome. It's really, really good. Uh, but anyways, this Trader Joe's, oh, this one here, again, they put the, the center in there. Uh, tastes really 
like a kind of a frappuccino. This is like a hard frappuccino, but this stuff is really, really good. So if you're looking for a new dessert idea, this is one I would check out. I really like all the different flavors. They have green tea ones. They have red bean ones. Again, chocolate, strawberry, vanilla. Uh, but this is a pretty, you know, also I see mango ones too when I'm over at Trader Joe's. So they have those. But give these a try for a dessert. Let me know what you think. All right, that's it, everybody. That's the nine unique foods I got from Trader Joe's for varying, various reasons. Uh, give them a shot if you're looking to try some new things. And again, we want to know what kind of unique foods you like as well. So share it with the group. Let us know. And we will see you next time. I have a bonus and the reason why I want to do this is because they were sitting right here on the counter. The ghee I mentioned, the clarified butter to put on the naan bread right here, some Trader Joe's. And then also you can use this as a pre-workout. This is the dark, dark chocolate covered espresso beans. Now sometimes these are almost gone as you can see. Sometimes I eat so much of this I get sick. I actually make myself sick from eating too much of these. These are really good too. So if you're looking for, again, maybe a little dessert or you want to add this to your pre-workout, go for it. If you like that video, I know you're going to love my app available on the Google Play Store for Android, iPhones, and the Apple Store. There's so much information on here. It's amazing. Training, workouts, hundreds of workouts, nutrition methodology questions, chemical enhancement, supplementation, client prep, and a Q&A button. Check it out.